Hey, I'm Davey, and today we're going to learn how to time remap to the beat. Really quick though, I feel like I have to acknowledge the fact that I haven't posted a video in over a year. It's been over a year, and I mean, look, these things happen, right? One day you post a tutorial, the next year you don't. All that matters is I'm here now, and we're ready to learn. So let's do just that. Inside of After Effects, we already have our project set up and ready to go. I've got the beat that we heard from the intro with a profile already baked to the kick drum. I've also got a clip here from my favorite video game, Rocket League, which I definitely don't have several thousand hours of playtime in. Let's just do a rough overview of what the clip entails. Okay, so here I am taking the ball upfield. When I see to my left, there's an opponent trying to demo me. Not a huge problem, just hop over him and you're good to go. But uh oh, here comes the goalie, charging from way too far away, let's be honest. Not a problem here either. Quick tap past him. That's what we call an easy goal. You may have noticed that the clip is actually in super slow motion. This is on purpose because we want the kick drum to pump forward. We want it to speed up momentarily and then return back to super slow motion. So let's actually get time remapping. Let's go to our footage layer, right click, go up to time, and enable time remapping. This reveals the time remap property. After Effects went ahead and added a keyframe at the beginning and end of our clip. These keyframes just mark the beginning and end of the clip. Let me show you. If I were to drag the end keyframe to roughly the halfway point, we are condensing time and effectively doubling the speed of the clip. But, you know, that's still really slow because our clip is extremely slow. If we slide it over another level, we'll get super speed. Okay, well, it's actually just like real time now because our clip is that slow. But you know what? Let's crank it. There we go. That's super speed. That's, that's really fast. Look at that go. So let's undo all of this, get back to where we were, and start reacting. We'll select the time remap property. Come on over to Freak React. Make sure your profile is selected and hit React. For the effect we're going for, we're only going to need the pulse reactor, but I highly recommend experimenting with the other reactors on the time remap property. Freak React went ahead and added the pulse reactor to the effects control panel. All we have to do now is increase the X intensity. I'm going to try something like 10, and I'm also going to come down to the beat and locate where the beat actually starts, which, looking at this waveform, it's most likely this shelf right here. So I'm going to move the cursor, hit B to change my work area, and hit play. That's a bit much. Let's turn it down to three. And we're gonna want some decay, plus it'll really help us visualize what the pulse reactor is actually doing. So let's turn that up a bit. Okay, we're starting to get a little something here, but it's not quite right. Right now it's pumping forward in time and then reversing itself back to where it would have been. We want it to continuously add forward. We want it to be additive. So let's make that happen by going over to the mods of our reactor and selecting additive. That's looking more like it. I actually think that the X intensity needs to go up a little bit. I'm gonna try four. Not bad. I'm going to increase the decay as well. Maybe like 65. That's looking just about right. Now we should also give some thought to where the beat lines up with the footage. As it stands right now, the beat is coming in so late that we're missing almost half of our sequence. To remedy this, we're just going to slide the beat over to the left. Ideally, 
the first kick drum would come in either right when I hop or maybe right before I hop with the second kick drum right when I hop. Let's see how that looks. It's getting there. I, I like this sequence, but I don't like that this hit lines up awkwardly. If we watch this again. Yeah, I want to try to get that right. So I'm just going to mess around with it. Let's try sliding it back a little. I'm going to try increasing this to 4.3, maybe 66. That looks nice. Now there are of course other steps you can take to add some extra magic to your time remapping. For instance, in the opening shot as I'm about to land on the ball, I manually added keyframes that remaps time to ramp into the shot. It really feels like you're leaning into it. And then when I finally do smash into the ball, I added a visceral camera shake that gives it an oomph, really lets you feel the shot. Now, if you really want to bring this effect to the next level, try out the Roto Brush. This tool is magic. In 15 minutes, I was able to isolate the car and the ball from the background, which gave me the chance to add this really awesome fake camera blur, which I'm sure you'll agree looks incredible. And last but not least, the sound design. Something I really enjoy doing. It's often overlooked, but it can be so, so powerful. We add in the build up to the shot, the shot itself, the goal explosion, the crowd cheering, the fireworks, everything coming together, it's beautiful. And with that, we've reached the end of my second tutorial. I have to say, I'm really excited to be back. I have a lot more tutorials to make, and I found a way to make them, which is much less time intensive. So with any luck, I'll be able to put out more than one per year. But who am I kidding? I'll see you guys in 2022 for my next tutorial. Goodbye.